Okay, welcome to Run, Race, Repeat, the live show where we talk about all things running, training, and racing. My name is Doug Pierce, coming to you from Staten Island, New York, and I am joined by my partner in crime, Brett O'Macy. I should probably look this way because that's looking at you on frame. How's it going, Brett? What it do? How you doing, yeah. Doug? Still coming from Dover Foxcroft, not Dover. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Big so. Difference. Yeah, I wanted to start off the show by uh, talking about a little hiatus we have. We had. Uh, Vanessa commented on the stream already. It's like she's happy thanks, that uh, there's a new episode. Uh, uh, thanks for letting us know. We're ha I'm happy too. Uh, so two weeks ago, we've had a two-week hiatus. Uh, Brett, two weeks ago, you were in uh, Jackman, right? Jackman, Maine. I couldn't get a Jackman, guest. Jackman, Maine. Yeah, I couldn't get... Uh, get my guest host uh, in line there. And then last week, ooh, we'll get to it, but my, I kind of had a little temper tantrum I threw and didn't want to do the show last week, and, as well as getting busy with work and, and all that, all that, all those uh, usual excuses that you can give. But uh, Vanessa, uh, thanks so much for your interest and, uh, and listening. It's Thank nice you, Vanessa. Hear. Nice to hear you're out there. Uh, okay, well, let's get, let's get right into it. Oh, well, actually, the topic of the show today is injury, uh, which... I think we'll all agree is one of the worst parts about our sport. And uh, we're going to talk about our experience with injury, kind of the mistakes we've made in the past, kind of things that we've hopefully learned uh, about uh, coming back to running or first getting started running uh, healthily. And also I want to talk about probably predominantly the mental aspect of getting injured because there's nothing more – frustrating than training hard for so long and maybe your goal race is you know coming right up and then you get injured and you have to take you know days weeks possibly months off um, and that can that can really drive you bonkers so we're going to talk a little bit about our tips for uh, staying sane when you get injured but first Brad, I thought I thought you've been running, man. Why are you so out of breath? Sorry, man. Sorry, I just. I know, I know. It's the heat. It's the it's the heat. It's, it's it the, is hot. It is hot. It is hot. So this is uh, the check-in where we talk about the training week behind us, or I guess in this instance, the training weeks behind us. Uh, Brad, actually, why don't you talk about your week, uh, your couple of weeks you've you've gone through? How's it been training-wise? And well, by the way, by the way, for those of you uh, watching. Go ahead and let us know in chat how your how your running week's been. We want we want to hear about how training's going. Yeah, I want to hear we want to hear about your running. Uh, Doug, I feel bad talking about it because you've been injured and having a little tantrum. So I don't know if oh. I want to do that or not. Oh, you spoiled uh, it! You spoiled but, it! Yeah, tell me. It's but okay. you know what? All right, here we go. Uh, I've actually run. Let's see. So two weeks now. Um, Thirteen of the last fourteen days, roughly five k to four miles a day. Uh, and again, the core, I'm really noticing a difference with the core. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's been a big part of my routine. Um, well, and, and that might be, you know, jumping the gun on one of our tips for remaining injury free, but yes, uh, so yeah. let's just, let's not, let's not get excited. Yet. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, so Doug, 13 days, I mean, I'm almost, uh, two weeks in a row, uh, feeling good. Um, yeah. doing my usual, uh, McDonald's drive through, uh, run yeah. around noonish. I just, I'm, I'm asking for just like, you're looking so skinny. Uh, they're probably going to like throw like Big Macs at you out the, out the drive through window. You, like eat this man. You need to, yeah, here's a milkshake. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they would want to even waste yeah. any, but I just, I'm running th around the cars and it's crazy there. It's like Mardi Gras in a small town, but with burgers and like lunch yeah, uh yeah. so but doug i i want to open with my my melon tweak moment yes uh, yes of course of the week yeah <sighs> uh out of state lay, lay it on us out of state right, what of, excuse me of, where are you going yeah, with no this? offense no offense uh but i'm running in the road not like dangerously i'm in the i'm in one of the lanes the opposite lane like i'm going with traffic um i'm mind my own business and this van from New Hampshire drives by me, and the guy, this guy, puts his hand out the window and goes like this, 
Like, hold on. Yeah, I can uh, see it. I can see it. Wait, hold on. Wait, is he snapping? Or like, gives he's, a... he's going like that. Like, like motioning you, like. Like, like he's like, excuse me, get out of the room. I'm like, I am oh. not. First of all, yeah. this is my town. Second of all, I run these streets. Uh, every day. <laughs> I run these streets. I run these streets. I'm dead now. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn, Harlem, right? Harlem Burns or something. That's like that. Washington. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he motions to me, <laughs> and I. I go, no, I'm not going to get out of the road. Um, yeah. You know, eat a butt. I'm not going to, you know, like move on. Go, go yeah. to, you know, get on, go to the highway, get on 85 and just kind of go. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, kind of related to our topic, but um, a lot of non runners don't realize that a lot of runners will run on the road instead of the sidewalk because the asphalt is actually a little bit softer on your joints than the concrete. That asphalt, though. Yeah, that yeah, asphalt. Yeah, that, that asphalt. But the, uh, but the concrete of the sidewalk will actually beat you up a little bit more. If you're running a lot of miles, that can add up. So if you do see somebody out there running on the road when there's a sidewalk right next to them, that's probably why. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, Mel I, I got a stupid fly that's like, driving me crazy here uh, you'll probably see it buzz by my face oh, I, uh I throughout the show you saw it already yeah, yeah. I, I saw it doug uh, uh so that's that's all i got for you right now so okay. uh okay well, i actually have a uh a melon tweak moment i guess i was uh this is i mean this is a while ago it was like two and a half weeks ago but i was i was i was running on the tra out on the trails and there were these mountain bikers coming at me um like on the other side of a small like walk like a board walkway over like a like a stream bed and i was doing like a workout so i was going you know at a pretty good pace and uh they didn't even think about letting me have right away they just like they saw me they saw me well ahead of time i don't know what the trail rules are pedestrian pedestrians versus uh cyclists yeah. But yeah, right. yeah, pass. Yeah, I guess I was in their their eyes, but I was a little annoyed because I had to like stop. I was doing like an interval, and I was right. like, you know what, <laughs> you know, I had to wait for them to come across, and you know, whatever. But uh, I was a little annoyed about that. I'm like, really, like you couldn't just stop and let me let me go through. Well, but Doug, I don't know what the my, etiquette my is. So my question is, was the because usually cycle. My father dislikes cyclers on the tour de france month because in maine like they get all jacked up on their full spandex like yellow or or yeah. just uni yeah and they go ham these guys wear the mm. like the gear yeah these were not those type of cyclists these were like just average joes and like their you know t-shirts and okay either way jor though. in their jorts okay. and they were uh just kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we got right. we had jordan staten island for sure um but anyway so that was my my tweak of the of the week but uh so my training i ran zero miles zero. this week zero miles and that's because a just about a week ago i was i did a tempo run on last not this tuesday but the tuesday before i did a a couple of tempo like cruise intervals, which is where you do, you know, two, you know, stretches of time. I think it was like 10 minute, two 10 minute intervals at like tempo pace. Okay. And I it felt great during the run. And I, I felt pretty good after my cool down and the rest of the night. And okay. even the next day, I, I, I did feel like a little bit of like tweak like discomfort maybe underneath the lateral aspect of my right ankle so on the the outer part of my right ankle but nothing that was nothing that was you know that disturbed me in any way uh, right. but then um that day i went to do my my run which was like you know 40 minutes i think i set out to do and right away i felt something was not right I felt like I was kind of limping a little bit 
and I cut the, I co of course, cut the run short because, you know, tip, if you feel something wrong, especially something that's throwing off your running mechanics, that's making you limp or is manipulating your stride in any way, you should definitely like right. stop the run. I probably should have started walking as soon as I felt it, but I, I ran back and, um, uh, you know, the next day my, my right outer ankle had swollen up pretty good. And uh, even my the top of my right foot had swollen a little bit, and it definitely it didn't feel good to put full weight on my right foot. And so I was like, okay, this is gonna take minimum of a week. I gotta take a minimum of a week off to recover here, and that's where I'm at. So I haven't, I, you know, I haven't been to a doctor. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to go for a little, uh, just a little jog tomorrow, see how it feels, but. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how okay. it goes. If it's if it's still acting up, um, it's time to see a doctor and get a you know get a scan done. See if there's any permanent damage. But uh, that kind of was uh, okay. my my inspiration for today's topic because it's it's man, it'll drive you crazy. I love running. I love so many things about running. I love getting you know doing work and getting re rewarded for that work by getting faster. I love, you know, the runner's high, whatever you want to call it, where you're out there and you're going for a run, you know, like a long run and where most people would be getting tired because of your training, you're, you feel not only up to it, but that you're going to even go even faster. You feel that good and you kind of come alive during the run instead of being, you know, grounded down like you might when you're out of shape. I love that. I love competing. So much I love about running, but uh, getting injured and it's just, it really can, I think, sour a lot of people to the sport. And it's, I mean, it's a big thing. So many runners, I mean, go read any forum where runners partake, read it, like look at any magazine, any kind of publication that deals with runners and like injury is just constantly being talked about it's constantly a thing and it's just a it's just a huge downside to our sport and yet i think for for most runners you're gonna you're gonna come up against it at some point and yeah i mean for me and brett we'll get to your kind of uh, experience in a bit but for me mostly in the past what i've experienced are muscle strains hamstring strains i've had a couple of those and i don't want to get in the war stories too much but you know hamstring strains calf strains that kind of thing and then i also do have the issues i got to be careful with uh with my uh, the tendons in my foot and around my ankle my achilles tendon and uh my ankle i'm pretty sure that what i experienced was a peroneal tendon inflammation around my right ankle but uh, i am not a doctor so I don't know for sure, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of what I've dealt with. Um, what about you, Brett? Well, uh, I've had some pretty significant injuries. Um, starting, it was a weird thing, uh, probably a two year span. I, I hit 30 and, uh, well, actually probably about 30, uh, two, 33. And, uh, it started with uh, an IT band syndrome. Now the IT band um, is so the basically it's like on the outside of the knee. It's a ligament that runs along your outer thigh all the way to the top of the hip to the outside of the knee. And when you when you uh, have this IT band syndrome, it feels like like there's something like snapping against the outside of your kneecap. It feels like you're running on a broken kneecap, mm. um, but it's not broken. And um, so basically, I had to get uh, rehab at the hospital for three months. Uh, the full works. That's how bad it was. Um, yeah, yeah. But what they told me was the biggest thing on my own to do. And so if anybody out there, um, even a non-IT band, maybe a non-serious, like, like running threatening injury, um, they told me that the foam roller is a is a great tool to use 
when you're not in re when you're not doing rehab at the hospital um, that doing foam roller is significantly it will it will drastically improve your results um, so I did that so three months rehab back into running um, so there's that uh, I fractured my ankle a year later uh, I thought it was a uh, a strain or like a, uh, a, ten a tendonitis and I ran on it and it felt I, I was crying basically like in tears after about 10 minutes and I was convincing myself that it was um, just a strain like snap out of it get go just do it yeah. but I was in tears uh, and it turned out about um, I went to France with uh, six students. I brought six kids to France for a week and a half, and we did about twelve hours of walking a day. And um, again, I came back home, and I got an X-ray, and it turns out it was uh, a fracture. And I had to basically be on an air cast for three months. I couldn't run. I was miserable. Uh, so there's that. So IT band syndrome fracture and the last thing six months later was plantar fasciitis now guys uh plantar fasciitis is basically a thick band of tissue on the bottom of the foot that extends from the heel to the toes um and it feels like again like it's broken um but there are things you can do doug as you know yeah. to um I, and they call it the rice method doug um, as you know, this method most likely. Um, oh yeah. So everybody, rice method, the R I C E method, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. The rice method can be used for numerous injuries that you have. Um, not everything, but that's a typical treatment. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great place to start uh, with anything. In fact, that's what I did. Uh, you know, I, I with my ankle. I'm hoping you're kind of giving me like you're making me nervous with t your story about your ankle. Uh, I'm a little anxious about running on it tomorrow. But I got through it. Yeah, but and we'll get to we'll get to in a little bit about some of the mistakes you can make because that's one of them. And I am, I think a lot of competitive runners are like that, Brett. Where you try to just convince yourself that it's nothing. You know, it's fine. Just keep You're a run. Oh, the, you've yeah. been through worse. Yeah. On the schedule, it says I got to run an eight mile today. I'm not going to, you know, a lot of runners tend I'm to be OCD. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut my run short. I'm going to get my eight miles because that's what my schedule yeah. says. And I'm going to toughen this out. And that is just not good. That's just not good. Hopefully we get wiser as we get older. And that is, uh, we, we don't uh, follow I, I have picture no, of that, but uh, it's always there. It's, you know, it never leaves you. It never leaves you. I don't, I don't think. Um, but, uh, so before we move on, um, uh, so Vanessa says in chat, I'm able to run a mile easy peasy now, which is great. Okay. And I have increased to yeah. two to three miles alternating days. Uh, I don't run the, uh, let's see here. I don't run the same trail two days in a row most days, and I bike eight to sixteen miles on my cross training days. So that's great, and that that um, thanks for sharing that with us, Vanessa. And that uh, thank you, Vanessa. That kind of echoes what I said about what I love so much about running is when you just feel your ability to do more, you know, run more, it becomes easier. I love that. I love that. So I'm glad you're experiencing that because that is one of the joys. This episode is about kind of one of the most negative things about the sport, most frustrating things about the sport. But what you're experiencing right now is definitely one of the most, uh, one of the greatest things about running is just feeling that improvement um, coming to you and you're doing the work, you're doing the work and it's, it's starting to pay off for you. So that's, that's good to hear. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, okay, so I kind of wanted to move on to the mental aspect of getting injured. Because as I've said, it's just so frustrating to be training and, you know, working so long and hard for a goal. And you you feel like you're poised to, you know, PR you know, set your personal best in a race or what have you, or the training is going so well. And then just like that, you know, I'll get it on camera. You are 
you're out of commission. You got to rest. Hi, boss. Yeah. And uh, you finally, you know, hopefully you didn't, you weren't in denial for too long and running on the injury too long and making it way worse. But, uh, you know, you got to, whatever it is, you got to rest. And now you like thoughts of you like losing your fit. I think that's one of the key things is that you, not only are you no longer progressing and getting fitter, um, but you're, you are now losing fitness. You know that, I think that's the biggest fear is that, you know, Oh my, what, I'm going to take a week off. I'm going to lose, you right. know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be huffing and puffing the next time I go back out running, which is of course crazy. That's crazy talk. I think, uh, for the most part, you lose fitness at about the same rate as you gained it. Uh, you, I mean, you do lose some, you will lose a little bit, but it's not, I mean, a week is nothing. Let me put it this way. You take a few days off or you take a week off. That is nothing in the long scheme of things, especially when you consider the fact that if you run on something, run on an injury and it gets worse, your three days to a week off could now be, you know, three months off basically, uh, weeks to months. So you got to do what you got to do. And that is, that is rest. And if it's serious enough, you got to go in and, and get it checked out, uh, for sure. If it's not going away. Um, but Brad, I don't know what you've done in the past when you've been injured. I find, you know, it's, I think you need to pick up you know, maybe not like another hobby or something <laughs> for the interim to kind of get you through. Maybe yeah, try to like learn I, something I, I, else. I, I, you got to fill I, those I, hours. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've been paint. I, I paint when I when I yeah yeah yeah, I do yeah portraits yeah. of yeah, yeah. of of dogs and uh, you know. yeah. No, I'm kidding. I don't. But I, I'm like pissed, and I'm like yeah. I'm like f hobbies. I want to get back to running. Right. Um, but you're right. Okay, so well, okay. Let, let's be real. What most runners do is they go on Google and they say, "Can I run?" They search can for, "Can I run?" Can I run with plantar fasciitis? You know, or oh, how long some, does it have to until oh, you can get back God. to running? Oh, uh, it, it, God! And some booger reader responds from like wherever state who has like no ideas. Like, well, I I heard that yeah, you can yeah. do it, but you gotta uh, like no. Yeah. You, no, you, you can't. You can't do it. You no. have to progress. You have to take. I had to take time off, Doug. I mean, look. Okay. Here's here's a time frame from my three injuries quickly. Yeah. Fracture. I didn't run for four months. Yeah. Okay. After after two months, I'm able to do. I'm basically able to do like the the, uh, the rowing machine right off. Mm -hmm. That was it. Nothing else that requires me to have any weight on my foot. Yep. So four months before I ran, um, IT band syndrome, um, I ran after about a month, but it was slow. Yeah. Um, and then finally the, uh, the plantar fasciitis took a week off, um, did compression, compression sock. I did exercises. I did heating. I did, I did uh, cold. I mean, yeah. it, it was, it was painful. But I felt good after a little while. So you're right. You you have to wait. What? what what's that looking what? for? Uh, I know. I'm looking at this fly. There's like a fly. Like that, damn, okay. Right that, I'm sorry. Doug, get the <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Fly, man. It's on my light. It's like on get, my light. I can that, like right in that, my face. Get I know. I'm get thinking that about going fly, for it now. Dog. Come on now, bro. <laughs> if I was going right. to knock my camera over, I would. I'd go for it right now. All right. So everybody, look at look. It's like this. Um, it is frustrating when you can't run and you, you're being told every by every every person different things. But you have to get medical advice. My suggestion is not go to Yahoo Answers or Google yeah. or yeah. or BuzzFeed. You have to go to a medical professional. I'm sorry yeah. to say, yeah. they will tell you exactly what you need to know. Your sister, who's been running for three months might not have the answer okay don't trust relatives yeah and yeah <laughs> you're not gonna know you're not gonna know you know for sure until you get an mri done you know in most cases what's going on there mri doug or just simply yep. just um like doug 
here's, here's for instance, I was convinced that my fracture was tendonitis. Yeah. And when yeah. I'm running, when, when I'm, that's what you wanted that, to believe, right? That's what you wanted to believe. I want, I was told this yeah. by, a, by a, someone who ha is in, has knowledge in the field. Yeah. I was running in tears. I was running short distance, yeah. but I'm convinced it yeah. took the doctor to press his thumb and make you wail in pain yeah. on my on my ankle. Which yeah. I'm going to tell you, his thumb on my ankle was probably one of the worst pains. Yeah. Yeah. I've. It was worse than running on the ankle. Was the thumb to the ankle? Yeah. Yeah. Thankle. I call it the, the thankle. The thankle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't know for sure until you go see a medical professional and they evaluate you. You're just not going to know. Googling something is just not a solution. No. It, it might help you get near what your problem is, but you just near feeling better. Sure. Yeah. Don't go to yeah. don't go to don't don't go to what's it called Quora? What Quora, the hell is it yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, Quora. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, <laughs> it's like the worst booger eater. I, yeah. Uh, oh. But yeah, you start getting into like if you, if you go to like like some kind of like forum based thing where you're oh, hearing no. people's personal oh, stories of, you'll oh, either hear, god. you know, somebody's you know best case scenario where they're like, oh yeah, I just kept running on it and it just went away. Which is what you want to hear, which is dangerous. But then you'll hear, you know, you could hear somebody's horror story of, oh yeah, you know that it ended up being a, you know, complete break of my, you know, femur, and I had to. It was the, it was I, Ebola. I, I had to stop running for like three years or whatever. So you just never know what you're gonna hear on the internet. There is no substitute for, to uh, going to a doctor. Yeah, and getting yeah, yourself Doug, evaluated. Well, and Doug, the other thing I'm gonna say about that is, is not only is going to Quora whatever google um bad in terms of advice but the the buzzkill stories when i was researching the hell out of all these things when i was you know in my early 30s some guys like yep had it band syndrome no he goes yep i had plantar fasciitis he's like haven't been the same since he's yeah. like I have been limping for freaking 50 i was like oh my god i'm like i'm going to i'm going to limp for 15 years, right. yeah, I'm gonna yeah, live the rest yeah, of my yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like Ken from Oklahoma. Yeah, has been yeah. limping for 15 years because of plantar fasciitis. Yeah, I'm gonna be a limper from now on. Right, right. Yeah, it's yeah, it's scary. Don't listen. Yeah, it's scary. To... Yeah, to that. You don't know. You don't know. You know what's behind that story. You just don't know um, what they did. To injure themselves you know you just don't know uh you are a unique individual your situation is unique and you just have to get medical advice that's that's the bottom line that's it um so let me let me check my little uh, cheat sheet here um yeah so i guess we should talk about when you do come back because i think a lot of times what happens is we you want to because when you come back after an injury, it's extremely important to be patient. Just like it's extremely important when you're first getting in shape to be patient, you've got to be patient when you're coming back because the last thing you want to do is re-aggravate your injury and just have to start the cycle all over again. Right. So you've got to just ease into it. Go for like light jogs. I like to think if you've been, if you've been not running for like a like a like a week to two to two weeks you know you you need to look at running that same period of time like two weeks of just like easy running before you resume any kind of like training um and if you've been out longer than two weeks you probably need to restart whatever training schedule you're on and definitely your first a couple of weeks need to be adjusted way down and you need to be doing some like easy jogging before you uh, think about increasing it. Right. You, know, you need to listen to your body. You need to listen to your body too. Um, definitely. But um, uh, I think that uh, when 
when I, from my personal experience, there's two, there's two main times during a training cycle when I'm most susceptible to getting injured. It's at the beginning, it's like a, like a month or two into my a return to running or starting a training cycle where you get that because the problem is your aerobic system progresses at a much more rapid pace than your neuromuscular your your muscular skeletal system so your bones your ligaments your muscles it takes that all of that much longer to get stronger and resilient but aerobically you can get you just got feeling like you can go further you can go faster and that's where the problem lies when you are getting aerobically fit you do feel that drive to go faster to go longer and then but your body isn't strong enough to do it and you get injured something rises up i think that might have been what happened to me a little bit uh with my ankle even though i i was you know i was trying to be careful i was trying to be patient but uh there you go. That's that's one of the times when I get injured. And then also I think is three quarters of the way through the training plan when you're not on your taper yet and you're doing your your longest and hard out hardest workouts of a session. Right. But you know, and you've got a lot of miles on your legs, a lot of hard training on your legs, and it can just be you know you can just reach a breaking point where your body just breaks down. Um, that's kind of the two danger points for me um, with injury when it comes to training. Um, or you have like a freak thing happen like back in uh, Farmington that uh, that race Brett in Aroostook County up in uh, Presque Isle where we were running on snow and uh, there was... Uh, it was like two, two or three inches of snow on the cross country course. And I, there was like a, you know, it was like a hole in the ground that I didn't see cause it was covered in snow and I stepped in it and you know, my foot like went <clears throat> kind of down and I didn't feel anything until I crossed the finish line. But immediately after I finished, I crossed the finish line and the adrenaline, you know, faded. Um, there was like this sharp pain on the top of my foot and I was like, you know, Ah, and like right away, I could not like step, like put full weight on it. And yeah, I fractured the metatarsal on one of my, uh, one of my metatarsals of my right foot. So, yeah. so all we don't know about this, <laughs> about this race, this, this is this a quick background. This was, uh, this was 2002, uh, the regional cross country meet, uh, in Presque Isle. Presque Isle, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a, over a dozen teams, and uh, we ran um, as a team for Farmington. Um, the, basically, the best team in the top seven go to nationals in Wisconsin. Um, yeah. Doug and I both qualified of those. Actually, uh, th- uh, four, four of us qualified out of the seven, right, Doug? Yeah, I think so. I think that sounds about right. Um, so uh, it was a big race, and there was snow. A lot of snow, yeah, actually, yeah. and uh, again, Doug. Yeah. Um, this is a, this is a, this is our biggest race of the year, heavy stakes, and uh, Doug ended up qualifying. I qualified, but Doug ended up uh, fracturing his leg foot. and My still foot. Quali- yeah. your foot. Sorry, and yeah. you uh, still qualified. Yeah, I mean, because so, I, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel I didn't feel it happen because the the adrenaline was you know kicking in. It was so heavy that I didn't even feel I didn't feel it happen. I didn't feel it until I. The moment I I stopped basically at the finish line, and then right away I was like, "Oh, <laughs> something's not right." Yeah, adrenaline is a powerful thing. It's a powerful uh, biochemical we have. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, that's kind of all I had um, on the topic. I don't know if we want to kind of wrap it up a little early. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Brett, in terms of? Uh, the running oh actually one thing i do want to mention is before this injury i actually did do i have a copy here i actually did do and hopefully this didn't contribute to the fact that i got injured but maybe it did um i did finish the uh hey! this, this streak this streak 
So I got yes. my, my 41 days in a, 41 in a row days. running. And, so everybody, uh, uh, congrats, man. Uh, yeah, th yeah, thanks. Hopefully that didn't contribute <laughs> to the fact that I got injured. But uh, I do want to say, too, that you're uh, the foam rolling thing. Yeah. I actually did, uh, you know, after I did this to my ankle, I foam rolled my shin, where which is linked, you know, the muscles, the peroneal uh, tendon, you know, comes up into your shin. And I foam rolled that, and my foot was literally shaking like it was like uh because the the tension was like reverberating uh down uh yeah what so, yeah uh, so doug yeah i want to say about the foam rolling guys one more thing about the foam rolling is um uh the more pain you feel um keep doing it because that's important because it shows that you that your muscles are tight that it's gonna it's gonna be painful but that's important because if there's pain, that means there's something wrong. Yeah. Uh, the more you do it, the better you're going to feel. Um, yeah. Also, again, everybody, just to review one last time about um, certain um, ways to uh, treat injuries. The RICE, um, the RICE method, the R-I-C-E, the rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Um, you know, hamstrings, quadriceps, calves, groin, everything. Um this is a typical method, but um, definitely consult your doctor first. But the Rice method is the is the old school style that it, does help. It's a good first line of defense. Like if something happens, that should kind of be your first go to um, before you can get in to see a doctor. Um, definitely Rice. Uh, but Vanessa, Vanessa is asking, how long did that injury take to heal? I assume you talk about my metatarsal, uh, and that that was like a couple months, I think, uh, where I was in a boot with a uh, i was in a boot to you know immobilize the foot and then i was using a cr one crutch on my on the side of the fractured uh, metatarsal foot to, to to keep the uh the weight off of that i think that was like a couple months that took so you know that's how it is so uh, let's talk let's then move brett to the The miles ahead, we're already running them. So I kind of already mentioned I don't have a, a lot of, uh, you know, next week's training for me depends upon how tomorrow goes. If I jog about a mile or so and see if there's any pain or anything. But for the most part, if tomorrow goes well, I'll kind of keep, uh, you know, jogging at least for another week. Um, nothing more than a few miles or so just to kind of keep, just to kind of ease my way back into it. And uh, it'll be a couple weeks of at least of taking it easy. You know, I won't be like training. Uh, you know, I'll be kind of just kind of trying to get back on the ramp to regular, regular training. But what about you? Uh, I'll be doing probably more so of the four to five miles now. Um, and. I mean, look, like uh, my uh, future is pending in terms of things, but um, the MDI marathon is still up. Um, it could happen. I know the uh, the good news is the uh, the main marathon still wants to happen. Um, really? I, be I believe. Because that's a pretty big don't, one. Yeah. Don't quote me on it, but they are – they are optimistic, uh, which means I'm optimistic of the MDI marathon uh, in late October, uh, which means that I kind of decide soon, do I really want to train for this? Um, yeah. Because if it, if it gets canceled, I'm going to be really pissed uh, putting in yeah. 50 miles a week. Uh, so, yeah. uh, and it's not, know, like, it's not like you, you know, it's not like you can just like go do another race because, I mean – you're gonna have a hard time finding one, you know, potentially. No, but um, but Doug, again, Boston, you know, for me is next April, so yeah, that's also in mind. But however, the the competitive part of me uh really wants to train for that MDI and in, in Bar Harbor. Well, I mean, I think it's a good idea. You gotta have you know some goal race to keep you, you know, motivated and going. So yeah, might not be a bad idea. 
Yeah. And even if it gets canceled, hey, at least you'll be uh, you know training and you know yeah. staying stay fit. So yeah, that's pretty good. They canceled. They canceled. Yeah. The, uh, you, you see, they canceled the New York City Marathon as well. They canceled it. I oh yeah okay yep I mean Boston's canceled New York's canceled. Uh... <sighs> well, uh, let's see. Uh, Vanessa's got a race a race idea. So there's a ridge, ridge to River Marathon on September uh, near Bethel. Oh, but that's beautiful. Uh, the Bethel area, the set. Uh, 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 what's 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 the ski resort there? Uh, Sunday River. So near Sunday River. Um. Small race could still happen, uh, definitely. Uh, but I, uh, I actually like I like small, small races. The more the more I've run the big ones, the more I like the the small ones better. Right, right. Um, but that sounds nice. But uh, okay, so uh, I think Brett, that's gonna do it. We're gonna end a little early today. Uh, we've kind of gone through our topic, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to our channel. Kind of it helps us out. YouTube gives us some um, oh, stupid fly. <laughs> uh, My I, God, that yeah, yeah. yeah if you, you fly. Subs yeah, subscribe. Fly and, in love, man. Yeah, yeah. So subscribe and uh, hit the bell, uh, the bell to get uh, reminders when we when we do go live. And until next time, you know, happy training, happy racing, and I uh, hope you stay injury free. And uh, so take care, Brett, and everybody else. See you guys. Take care, everybody. Bye.